है वर्ड्स नहीं मिलते और अहम जी अगर खलीफा भगत को देख ले तो मैं नहीं समझता कि वो सारी उम्र हजूर का चेहरे पे जो नूर है वो भूल जाए इन जर्मनी फेयर ऑफ इस्लाम इज राइजिंग Mass protests against the opening of mosques have become more common. Far-right groups are taking strength. It was in this backdrop that one of the largest Muslim conventions in all of Europe was being held near Frankfurt. The Caliph of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, Hazrat Mirza Mansoor Ahmad, was coming to address the convention. The Ahmadiyya Muslim community believe in the promised Messiah. the second metaphorical coming of jesus they number tens of millions all across the world for 10 days the review of religions was given unprecedented access to document every activity of the caliph did the people of germany have anything to fear from his arrival what message was he coming to give and how would his followers behave and what would be their reaction in search of the answers to these questions we traveled hundreds of miles across germany's autobahn we met people in their homes we met people in their workplaces and we followed every movement of the caliph to piece together a unique story these are the scenes behind the scenes this is our story of the caliph in germany The caliph had an extremely grueling schedule. It seemed like he was on a mission to meet as many people as possible, in particular those who had newly joined the Ahmadiyya Muslim community who had never had the chance to meet him before. A large number of delegations had come from all over the world to attend the convention. So the caliph dedicated a lot of time to meeting each and every one of these delegations. On one day he met so many people in a short space of time that four makeshift locations had to be set up. So some people he met in his office, others he met in the hall just outside his office, and then two large halls were set up in the mosque. The schedule was so compact that often the caliph immediately after meeting one delegation would get up and go to meet the next one. What was observant was that despite this hectic schedule, the caliph would meet everyone exactly the same. with the same love the same affection always with a smile and always extending a hand of compassion there was a really interesting person we met in the slovenian delegation he is a non-muslim but he said he had a special link with the caliph he told us that for many years he had been translating and subtitling the friday sermons of the caliph listening to every word that the caliph had to say very carefully can you describe the meeting Yeah, this was my my first time I met him, and since I translated quite a few speeches that he has written, it was a privilege to meet him. I also had the opportunity to ask him a question. What, what, what was the question that you asked him? Well, uh, he said uh, in one of his speeches that if a Muslim finds himself in a in a contradiction between what is written in Quran and between what's written in law in law of the government he should follow law of the government so i asked him for a little clarification on that and he said that um well government shouldn't interfere in religious matters of muslims in that kind of case it is duty of muslim to follow his religion but other than that he should follow follow law of the government As we were recording, we saw a young girl from the back rush forward towards the caliph. A security guard tries to intervene, but the caliph very lovingly says that the girl should be seated beside him. For the next few moments, this girl is able to spend precious time in the company of her spiritual guide. This was something reflective of the entire trip, where we noticed the caliph showing close attention to even the small details of the sentiments of very young children in this way. I I give this child first bath ah. when he was born because he was born in a masjid. <laughs> There's a lot of dua from everyone. Yes. So we met a passionately dedicated family from Sarajevo, Bosnia Herzegovina, who had been Ahmadi Muslims for several years. Dino Hashpulic was there with his family and son Sohib Hashpulic. 
he was visibly overwhelmed with emotions speaking to the caliph. At one point he requested the caliph to wear the ring that he was wearing and to pray upon it and to rub it with the ring that the caliph was wearing. He touched it with the ring of the Prophet. Yes, yes, I heard that about that. That's why I, yeah. I, I, I buy a new one from the bazaar. And so I, how do you feel now? Uh, I'm very happy because of that. I have one ring that touched Huzur's ring. That's <laughs> something... Uh, In some ways. <laughs> A young girl from the Macedonian delegation is overcome with emotions. She cannot believe that she just had the chance to meet the Caliph. She had wished to sing a poem to the Caliph, but at this moment of time she is frozen in her chair. The Caliph is informed and he gives special permission for her to come up with her friend and sing a beautiful poem in his presence. Amir sir, yes. Alhamdulillah, but it's an amazing thing that many people have been talking about this. So, what are you talking about? No, the thing is that when you have a conversation with your brother, you have a conversation with your brother, or wherever you are, you can't talk about anything. It's like that, 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 तो लेकिन बड़ी खुशी हुई होते हैं ये हमारे क्या कहते हैं सही मुलाकात होती है। My name is Paris Muhyiddin. I am from Indonesia, from North Jakarta. It's amazing, speechless. I think it's speechless. Meet with my huzur, my beloved huzur. It's amazing man. I miss meet with huzur. And I think I it's wonderful, wonderful. It's amazing. Who's uh, smile with me? And I think I close to God. It's look like that. Yeah. Jazakumullah. Coming up in part two. हम पे फजले खुदा हर कदम पर हुआ हमको हासिल खिलाफत का साया हुआ हम पे फजले खुदा हर कदम पर हुआ हमको हासिल खिलाफत का साया तो यहाँ पर आकर बहुत अच्छा महसूस हो रहा है कि खिलाफत साहब को देखा दिल की ख्वाहिश पूरी होगी मेरी हमको हासिल खिलाफत का साया